All right. Um, it is 10 minutes to the hour. Um, welcome again, everybody, to the afternoon of the Honda Tech Sprints program publications track. We have the terrific team R5 um, up for you next. Um, and Lance is going to be presenting um, Take It Away, Lance. Great. Thank you, Eric. Um, I, we've been really impressed with all the amazing presentations today, and we realize how quickly the time can go. So I'm going to dispense with some of the traditional niceties other than to say thank you so much for this opportunity and thanks so much to the CFPB team. You've been amazing, the census team. Um, you've been amazingly helpful and, and supportive and a lot of great guidance. So we really appreciate that and we appreciate the opportunity um, to, per, to present our work. Um, rural uh, R5 stands for Rural 5. So we are a team comprised entirely of organizations and individuals who live and work in rural communities. So that's our raison d'etre. And we think we provide a unique perspective on the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act from that, from that dynamic. So I'll have to say it was a sprint. We're somewhat exhausted at this point, um, but, the, but the true value in, in my estimation uh, in the most amazing part of the week was able to work with such a great team. So I would like to introduce them. They're just an amazingly robust and august group. Um, on our team, we have five members. Again, noted we all serve rural facing or rural organizations. Dave Castillo is the CEO of uh, Native Community Capital. Uh, they're a CDFI that primarily works with Native American, or they work in the mortgage access field, working with Native American communities all across the United States. Zoraima Diaz-Pineda, uh, it works for CDCB, which is just a phenomenal community-based organization and regional organization that works in Brownsville, Texas. Uh, with communities along the U.S.-Mexico border and Colonia communities. Again, I could spend our entire 10 minutes on our team, so I'm just very quickly going over them or, pre or presenting them. Um, Andy Saavedra works for Rural LISC. Um, Andy is a nationwide expert on all rural issues, many rural issues wide, but has particular um, expertise and attention to the rural southeast, na namely the lo lower Mississippi Delta and so certain areas of the rural southeast and communities within the rural southeast. Uh, Dr. Wiley, Keith Wiley is our data scientist and he's with the house. He's a senior researcher with the Housing Assistance Council. And I'm Lance George. I am also with the Housing Assistance Council. So we're going to set I'm going to set this up very quickly because I really want to turn it over to our team. That's where the real value lays. Um, but and but I really want to focus on this issue value. The first value is that Humda is an amazing value. It's an amazing resource. Um, and and it's it's really helpful in our work and the work of everyone obviously on this call today but there's also value in the underlying value that consumers and data users should have a, have a complete view of their mortgage market within that those two kind of value statements so we really did want to start out with not a deficit but there's a lot of value um, on several dynamics getting to the deficit which is our challenge <coughs> is that humda is incomplete in some respects and we're going to talk about this more in the data presentation, but it's often what I refer to in this kind of the Rumsfeldian paradigm of the unknown unknown. And in, in some respects, some uh, as some of you know, not all financial institutions report to Humda. So in some communities, and this impacts some communities more than others, there is a what we would call an incomplete picture. And it, the unknown unknown comes in that we just don't know exactly what we're not getting. We don't know the information. So we'll go into more detail. I will provide, it's not an anecdote, these are, these are a statement from renowned Humda scholars, um, Robert Avery and Glenn Kaner, and I'm just going to read the first part of this passage where they say, while Humda coverage for MSA is quite complete, these reporting exceptions lead to significant distortions in the coverage of rural areas. And that's something with that um, uh, users and communities that rely on this information for rural analysis and rural communities, it's been a huge blind spot in our work. So we really convene this team to somewhat address that challenge. It is a relatively substantial challenge though, because some of it's based in multiple layers of statute um, and regulation and history um, and capacity, or it's a multi-dimensional issue. Uh, simply stated, um, a better understanding of missing mortgage data would improve Humda for all. This is not just a rural issue, it's for all communities, but it particularly impacts rural communities. So that's our intersection. And our goal today um, and our goal this week was to reduce the unknown in that unknown paradigm. So R5 is developing, and I would have to say the ING on developing is the operative word here. Um, 
because there was a pretty extreme degree of difficulty. But developing a rural reporting index for Home Mortgage Disclosure Act, this is primarily a, would be a consumer based um, enhancement that would let a community understand what level of reporting comes uh, HUMDA uh, mortgage data is reported through HUMDA for their community. So I have a relatively simplistic schematic here um, where we uh, the goal is to build a rural reporting index and there's some kind of top inputs and then some outputs, and then we can talk about, um, hopefully that will be some of the discussion, what the value is of that, so, um, or what some of the, you know, the long-term impacts could be up from those outputs. Um, but this is, again, it's it's somewhat conceptual, although we did a, a Herculean amount of work this week to, to inform this process, and we have some initial results and findings. I would say also, before I turn it over to, to Dr. Wiley, who is our data scientist, to go through the process, I do think there's some precedent here um, for these conceptual consumer-based mechanisms within HUMDA that could be more actualized into more robust tools. I used to work with HUMDA a long time ago when there wasn't data for manufactured housing. I think some of you on the call might remember that. There just wasn't a manufactured housing field. And um, the FFIEC at the time had developed a, a, a basic list that indicated if a, you know, where they, it was an estimate that they assumed that this list of lenders primarily made manufactured home loans. So I do think there's some precedent for this concept moving forward. But with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Keith Wiley to run through some of our preliminary analyses for this week. Okay, everybody, I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity. Uh, and I'm just gonna run through a few quick slides and uh, the, that uh, uh, we've, uh, we, we made in some of the, and so we, we, we're trying to develop a reliability index. Essentially what we wanna do is try to measure how many, like Lance said, how much of HUMDA, maybe areas where it's not recatching all the market. Uh, and so we always, we hear a lot about that in our work. Uh, and so some of the areas we we look at are particularly the exemptions to Humda, and these are all things that you you know you all likely know, like the asset threshold exemption of lenders with less than forty seven million dollars, or uh, a lender that does not operate have an office in an uh, MSA and, and is only outside of metropolitan areas. And uh, in there's now the loan limit, uh, one hundred uh, closed end loans and five hundred open end loans. And I should also say before this that we're talking primarily about FDIC uh, banks and thrifts here, and it would also apply to like credit unions. We do a similar kind of thing for them as well. Uh, and so what we set out to do was uh, we've looked at this different times before is to, to identify the lenders that would fall outside that asset threshold or the ones that do not operate uh, in an MSA and also the ones that do not uh, are likely not to have enough loans to report. Uh, we estimate, uh, you know, where they are, find out where they are and uh, see if there's any geographic concentration. Um, and also look at maybe to assess the amount of lending and from there tell us how well the market's captured in these areas. Uh, and also another important element, identifying emissions, uh, other areas that might matter a lot. Like I, we always joke a lot of times that you can't get it all on GitHub. In a lot of these markets, I can look at a lot of Humda data, but then I'll go talk to somebody there and they'll tell us and some of my colleagues will talk about some of those important indicators that should be considered. And then ultimately make this available online uh, in the form of a map like a, a ArcGIS platform where you could go to your county and see and truly get some background information on how well it's covered in Humda. Uh, so what we did was we got a count of uh, lenders. And again, we worked with the, just the FDIC banks uh, and uh, thrifts and savings institutions that fell below the threshold, the ones that did not have a, a office in a metropolitan area, and the ones that uh, using uh, previous home today that we thought were likely to have fewer than 100 loans. We identified those institutions. It was about 26, 2700. We merged them in with the latest Humda reporting, and any ones that were crossover, we took out. Uh, and then we also put in some call report data and some summary of deposit data from the FDIC, we tried, we were trying to make sure we had lenders that were most likely making mortgage loans. And here we have distribution of them, and I'll try to move it up a little bit. The, it's, I just think it's a nice map, the 2,600 lenders are here, about 300, you can see the, the dark, the, are the, the red are the limited assets, 
the, the, the green are the ones with uh, fewer than uh, 100 loans, and then the white ones are the ones that operate outside of a metropolitan area. So I'll move this up. And what we did was we created an index. We tried that. We used a continuous hum to data right now to make an estimate on just about how many loans we thought were being missed. And then we tried to create an indicator, and here's what we thought it would kind of look like in a map form. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues if I can now. And uh, that's, that's the data. Thanks, Keith. And, and just what I, I think Keith said it best, and I think the real value of our team, I, we often say, he, I think this was really good. Though. So GitHub is the platform where we were able to access uh, data resources. That was a Herculean amount of work, um, and we're looking forward to pursuing it. But uh, the real value or the value of our team, equal value is that we have community experts who work with this in, in, in real time applied uh, formats every day. And so you can't get everything from GitHub. So I want to turn it over to the other team members who to provide a more applied perspective of this, of how this might inter intersect and some other um, and some other elements that we just can't even capture in the data, but are very important for building this product out further. So I think I'll turn it over to Andy Saavedra at Rural Risk. Hey, um, good afternoon. I'm Andy Saavedra, a program director with Rural Local Initiative Support Corporation. We're a community development or a support organization working right now with about 87 partners in, in 44 states since 1995. Uh, I was very happy to be part of this. Um, I have more general comments. Uh, for a lot of my work working in rural areas, especially with smaller emerging groups, I really need good county level data to support to support their work. And I'm just not sure if, if small banks are captured because of that 100 unit threshold. Um, as we were discussing, we're not sure if all of USDA, I think the guaranteed is counted, but the direct isn't counted. And having that good county level data is important, especially working with emerging groups where you, you want to be able to let them know precisely what universe they're dealing with. So, but if, so they make intelligent assumptions on how they want to grow their programs and how they want to serve their programs and, and, and what's going to work and what's going to work at those programs. Uh, did Dave, did David make it? So I, I, I do you want me to run through his? Um, maybe we'll turn to Zoraima right now okay. uh, and then um, and then one of our other That's team. Fair, yeah. no, let's yeah. do that. Okay, thank you. I, I just want to give you a time warning. You're 12 minutes in. Great. Thank okay. you. We're going to take a couple of one more two more minutes. Thank you. Yeah, I'll quickly just state, um, as, as Lance mentioned, as a practitioner in the field, we serve the four southernmost most counties along the Texas-Mexico border. We are a lender, we are a CDFI, and we need accurate information regarding mortgage activity in rural regions to develop equitable policy solutions and really drive the investment of patient capital in the low wealth and rural places that we call home. Again, just to give you an example of the 2,900 individuals that we saw on the pre-purchase side last year, again, at CDCB, we still originated less than 100 loans, but we know that clients worked on average with a counselor for 10 months, reduced their DTI by 5%, increased their credit score by 82 points, but still we need more information yeah, regarding mortgage activity in order to continue to develop innovative, affordable mortgage products tailored to meet the profiles of the low wealth low to moderate income households of color that we serve and to further incorporate them into the financial mainstream, especially when we know that for the households that we serve, the home purchase represents the largest principal wealth accumulation vehicle for families, again, in rural areas and colonias. And we need accurate information regarding applications, loan originations, and denials in some of the hardest, reach, hardest to reach communities across the United States. And this rural reporting index will assist to fill this gap in information. Thank, thank you so much, Zoraima. And uh, we had another team member who I think might not be able to join us at this time. I'm gonna maybe make a couple of his uh, points, um, but I would like to maybe, Eric, turn it back over. If Dave is not, uh, Dave Castillo is not available um, to entertain any questions. And I would interject probably a couple of the points that were very similar, but I would really focus on the amazing team. Keith did an amazing job on the, on the data work but we really need the valued community perspective that Andy and Zoraima presented. So thank you very much. Thanks, there's a great team.